Welcome to Patch and Play, where broken stuff finds new life. I'm GP and I like to mess around with stuff I don't know anything about. Here we dive headfirst into the heart of mechanics, electronics and everything in between. From bikes that have seen better days to laptops that refuse to wake up, cars that whimper instead of roar and gadgets that have lost their spark. We explore, we tinker, we fix. Well, hopefully. In today's episode, we're starting with a big challenge. My dad's Volvo V50. There's seemingly nothing wrong with it, it drives and looks pretty neat for a 13 year old car. But it has one big problem. We recently have gotten pretty strict emission testing in Belgium and this car has way too much particles flying out from the exhaust. If we don't fix that, the car won't be allowed on the road anymore. So, a little bit about the car. This V50 was built in Belgium in 2011, so you could say it's a local product. It has a 1.6 liter turbocharged diesel engine, which is a fairly common configuration for small to medium sized cars in Europe. It produces 115 horsepower and 217 newton meters of torque. It's not a big number and it certainly doesn't sound sporty but it gets you around in an economical way. So, while I was pretty sure that the particle filter was responsible for the failing emissions, I wanted to be sure everything upstream was okay. I used the cheap OBD dongle to read error codes from the car's computer, and three injectors had an error concerning the amount of fuel injected. More on that later. I tried the easy way of adding some injector cleaner to the fuel, but that was only a temporary fix. A few weeks later, the error was back, so I need to investigate further. I found a company that could test and clean the injectors, but I need to get them out of the car first. Anyway, I already talked way too much and let's get on with it and see how hard it can be to act like you're in a car mechanic. So this is the procedure uh, as told by Volvo Vida software. It's looks pretty straightforward but at first i need to remove the induction pipe let's take a look okay so yeah that's in the way in order to connect to the car and use vida i got this mongoose it's normally only used for jaguar and land rover but it works also on uh, a volvo certain volvos and the good thing is this is about 30 euros and a clone of an official volvo dies that will set you back about 200 euros. So right now I'm doing a new reading of the car. Uh, yesterday I cleared the injector code because I placed a new battery and reset some stuff. Um, so now we're gonna check if we have any new errors. And at the moment we have no codes found, uh, but I know the injector code will come back anyway. So according to the manual, the service manual or the, the software, I have to take off the entire induction pipe, which is of course this uh, this section. I think it is to get to the first one. Yes, it is below here. Um, but they want me to take off this and the whole part behind, which is the EGR valve and connected to coolant and stuff. Um, I don't really feel like doing that, so. I hope we can just take off this hose clamp, uh, disconnect all this and um, disconnect this hose clamp and then uh, I think we have enough room to work with, uh, I hope. Um, but we're gonna start with this bracket, this is gonna come off, uh, this is where the fuel filter housing sits, um, so I have to get this off in order to disconnect uh, these hoses, these are in the way, these are fuel lines. Um, and then we can remove this cover thingy and uh, we'll see from there. So in order to get these loose, you just have to pry out these white clips completely. I already put them back in in order not to lose them. Although maybe just prying out one is enough. But I always hate these things, it's plastic and it breaks so easily. Okay, so I'm already sure we're gonna have to remove this induction pipe. Uh, let's see how we can get rid of this. 
without with disconnecting as little as possible. I think there has already been worked on before when they replaced the one injector maybe or I don't know something else but well let's see what we find in there. So I removed this this bolt and this nut and here is another one and I think then I can wriggle this whole thing free to connect this uh, connector I hope I hope it's this easy oh it wasn't this easy it's still stuck I think there is here still one bolt all right so I'm gonna have to undo all four bolts ah you see it's already coming apart it's not that hard they were just like finger tight my finger is already bleeding I should get some gloves first but this will come off that's a good thing uh, I think yeah we will leave the pipe I put some paper in it so nothing can fall in and then hopefully we can get this thing off and a clear view on the injectors of course I am thinking and bagging everything uh, even these three screws I know myself so DB for throttle body I also just dropped my ratchet down there and I don't know if I will be able to retrieve it. I got it back. Just uh, screwed the bottom plate a little bit here yeah, and then it's plastic. So I'm gonna leave it unscrewed because it's probably not the last time I will drop something. Damn. Well, almost there. So this part is out. Like I thought, it is the throttle body. It is actually very clean. The gasket is still intact. I don't think it's a gasket, it's like an O-ring. So perfect. So we'll put it inside. Very next step is to wait all this off. Okay, it came off with a little bit of wiggling and just like putting a screwdriver between the pipe and this plastic thingy. And then with some force it came off. So now I think we can take this off. And uh, we have a nice view. I know why, why you have to take off the induction pipe. It is to replace these guys. You should replace them. But we're not gonna do that. It's really expensive. It requires taking off the whole thing. Curious if they did replace it when they put in the new injector and it's actually this one this is the new one i already checked it this looks exactly the same so i don't think they replaced it either so we're gonna first take off the connectors also take a picture or write down which uh, injector goes to which cylinder because that's important they are coded to the ecu so first we're gonna disconnect uh, the electrical connections then we're gonna pull off the return lines and then we're gonna uh, unscrew the high pressure fuel lines and then we should be able to well to get to the bolts the torx bolts keeping the injectors into place so these are quite easy to get off you just uh, squeeze, uh, pull this green thing up and it will unlock. It's not that difficult. Some are hard to reach, but yeah, you can see just, that just popped off. And this one, same thing. And then you just pull them off. There we go. A little bit of diesel coming out. This is the turn line. And there they are, smells like diesel, that's how it should smell. Okay, next are these uh, high pressure fuel lines. I hope they are a bit flexible so we don't have to go down there. And then we, then we are screwed, and then we are really screwed. We need, we need to take off this whole, this whole EGR valve thing. Uh, I don't wanna do that, so I hope there is some wiggle room quite easy actually like first one you see just 
There we go. There we go. And just when it when it goes, you can just ah the first one I could just unscrew by hand. This needs a little bit more force. Well, these need to be retightened at 25 newton meters. Okay, so let's get uh, rid of the other two ones and then move on to the little Torx bolt that holds uh, the injectors in the engine. So, especially for this bolt, I bought a complete hex, uh, sorry, not a hex, a Torx kit. Uh, well, comes in handy anyway. So, let's start with this one. You see this, uh, this cover was ripped because this injector was replaced uh, about 40,000 kilometers ago. I don't think they really did it according to the book. And then this comes off from under the injector. And now we have to, yeah, I think I'm gonna need two hands to pull this bastard out. So it takes a bit of force and some wiggling and I should really wear gloves or gonna start bleeding again. Anyway. This is the newer injector, and as you can see, it is it is pretty pretty damn dirty. And this is supposed to be the good one, so really really anxious to see the other ones. Not sure if this is a good idea. Yeah, it is a good idea. Make sure I don't get any filings or other crap into the engine block. Come on. Ah, there we go. There. And this is the bracket. And I'm not gonna say this looks particularly bad. It's some carbon deposit. I think this is to be expected. I did get all injectors out without much fighting. I would recommend to get an injector removal kit. I will certainly will get one if I ever have to do this again. Okay, so I got the injectors back from uh, the testing bench and uh, yeah, I didn't get the answer I was hoping for, of course. So, injector 3, the newer one, is still good, still well nicely in spec. Number 2. It's very bad and it's actually leaking and it's probably the cause of my emissions problem and it's also providing too little uh, diesel fuel into the engine. Then we have number four which barely passed the test so it's only probably a matter of weeks uh, before it fails again and probably it was the also the, the cleaning of the injector made it pass but um, they were pretty sure if I put it back in it would fairly quickly um, go out of spec again and then number one was kind of like yeah you can still use it if you really want but it's not great either so I listened to their advice and uh, I ordered three remanufactured units from uh, Video Continental they should arrive later this week uh, and we're gonna put them in I also read online from a guy in um, the Netherlands who just recently, a few weeks ago, did the same as I did and he told me the fuel consumption of this vehicle dropped back to 4.5 liters per 100 kilometers, which is great and uh, I thought like, okay, with current diesel prices, if it's better to just uh, replace all of the bad injectors so they will run optimum and uh, I hope to reduce my fuel consumption as well. Here are the test values that I got as you see uh, number two has an error and these are the new uh, injector codes I should put in the ECU through the Volvo software if I want to uh, place them back so I'm gonna need this one from the third and then here on uh, the, the graph you can see this is different pressures and the range where they should be in and uh, yeah the top one is of course number three the, the best one and even that one is is you can see it's already deteriorating and then especially in the 850 bar you can see that they're all pretty low uh, the second one is not here I, um, I asked how I should read this I'm not an expert 
and uh, the value should be between uh, this number and this number. This is the flow in uh, cubic centimeters uh, per minute. Um, and then you can see the pulse duration and the uh, pressure and uh, stuff. Um, so the first value is um, how much cubic centimeters uh, are coming out and this is the return line. So first, they're all saying they're delivering pretty low. So um, the second one, actually the value is too low, too low should be at least 5.9, it's 5.7, but you can see fourth injector is pretty low as well. Injector three is okay. Same goes for um, same pressure, but shorter pulse. You can see injector one is still okay, but quite close to the, the lower value. Um, and you can see here, fourth one is very close to the minimum. Um, here it's a bit better. They're all performing okay at the lower pressure. But um, I'm imagining the engine runs most of the time at the, these intermediate pressures. I don't know, that, that's what the guys told me, because first I was thinking about keeping injector 1 as well. But you can see that uh, the values are getting close to the failed injector. So even if I keep injector 1, um, probably in a few months time, I'm going to have troubles uh, with that one as well. I hope that last part wasn't too boring with all the numbers flying around, but it seemed like interesting stuff to leave in the episode. In the end the whole test was a bit of a waste of money, but at least I did learn something and I appreciate the guys from that garage for taking their time to explain everything to me. If you liked this video I hope to see you in the next one where we will put shiny new injectors in the engine. Consider subscribing if you want to stay up to date with future projects. There is a whole lot in the pipeline, that I can tell you.